Welcome. Welcome to Lighting for Profits, presented by Emery Allen, with your host, Ryan Lee, your number one source for all things landscape lighting. From lighting design, install, sales and marketing, we discuss everything you need to know to start and grow a successful landscape lighting business. What's going on, party people of the world? Welcome, welcome, welcome to Lighting for Profits here on Turfs Up Radio. We are live on Turfs Up Radio, YouTube, Facebook, all the places the cool kids hang. And uh, I'm supposed to say this every episode, but I always forget. Turfs Up Radio, your industry, your station. That was good. That was good. I like that. So if you are looking to start or grow your landscape lighting business, then you are definitely in the right place. We're going to spend the next little bit of time talking about how to grow your business. And hopefully you'll walk away with some nice insights into how to make more money and replace yourself in business to go from operator to owner. So uh, I also came up with a new saying. I'm going to read it so I don't screw it up. You came up with this? I think. Okay. I may have copied it somewhere. I just can't remember if I did. But the purpose of lighting for profits. You ready for this? Hold on. Is this like like just okay? This is like we're gonna stick with this. This is gonna be something that will live on. We'll take a vote. Okay. It's just two people voting. Kind of like the the only people voting. Is this still the number one landscape lighting show in the world? It it has to be. (laughs) Yeah. Some guy in Norway is like, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. You know, there's somebody's gonna start one just to take me down, which that's cool. Uh, All right, here it is. The mission statement of lighting for profits. We are here to educate and motivate to help you dominate your local market. I was all set to be a smart ass and give you a hard time. That's good. I like it. It's really good. Nice. No like buzzer. No, <laughs> no. I full green light go. Should I have done this? Say it. <laughs> I think we're we are way too old to use that sound effect. I love that sound. Uh, you say it again so people can take notes. We are here to educate and motivate to help you dominate your local market. Or we could just end it with to help you dominate. Yeah, the local market lost a little something. Damn it. I'm deleting it. was good. That was good. All right, we'll work on that. But uh, yeah, thanks for being here, Steve Perkins. Appreciate you having me. You know, I am. um, At first, I was really grateful to have you here. And now I'm just super envious. Because Steve, he shows up, just has really no responsibility shows up when he wants he's i've got the camera ready for him i've got the mic i've got all this stuff and he just gets to hang out so i'm super envious of you right now i i told you when i took this i said there's only one reason i'm doing this so we get to hang out once a week that's that's the sole purpose behind this yeah well sponsors uh reach out and pay us a ton of money so that we can start paying steve and then then i can like have him do stuff but (laughs) yeah thank you guys for showing up thank you so much for your support uh, I really am grateful. We just had Thanksgiving, so um, I'm grateful beyond last week. How was your Thanksgiving? It was good. 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 We had the the party was at our place. We had 25 people. Oh, it was a uh, we had all the the fixins. Nice. We had 29. Oh, not to outdo you, but no, the, the one upper. Run out, do you? Everyone loves that guy. Yeah. The one upper. 29. <laughs> uh, but now I would have rathered. Uh, you beat me on that record. I would have much rather been like, yeah, we only had six. You know. Just our kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we and then we uh, rented a cabin, went up to the cabin for the weekend. So it was nice. Nice, very cool. Good weekend. Well, today we're gonna have our guest is David Kaminsky. He uh he's an awesome dude. I actually haven't known him very long, but recently he came in and did a training inside of Landscape Lighting Secrets inside our coaching program. And I'm telling you, the stuff that he's gonna go over is insane. Um, you know, I I I've spent thousands of dollars, like tens of thousands of dollars on uh, trying to rank websites and uh, just get leads, right? And uh, he's going to share with us kind of how he uses uh, Google My Business and his website to generate a ton of qualified leads, not just like crappy leads, but a ton of qualified leads to grow his window cleaning business. And I, the reason I, I, I'm excited to have him on too is because, I, I don't know if you know this, I got my start in window cleaning. I, I do remember, you remember that. that. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. I'd forgotten. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't, it only lasted a summer. You know, and then I was like, because it wasn't actually a business. It was just like, how do I make money to get married? And uh, so I, it's cool. Like he's he's super successful. Like he grew a window cleaning business to like an actual business. 
and now he's not involved in the day to day and stuff like that. So it's cool because he's not just like this guy who knows how to get leads and software and stuff that doesn't have like he has the real world experience. So yeah, I'm excited to have him on. We're going to talk a little bit about his experience growing that business, maybe some of his pain points and how we overcome it, come those. And then at the end, we are going to talk about um, it's not really a software, I guess, but the strategies he does to help people get more leads. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, so today, uh, I was actually, I had the opportunity to hang out with my old company a little bit, did a zoom call with uh, majestic outdoor lighting. And uh, my brother was there, uh, my old office manager and, and sales guys and stuff. And uh, we did that because, uh, they're looking at getting a new, I don't want to like disclose kind of what they're doing and what the name, uh, for a couple of reasons, but they're getting like a new software. Okay. And, uh, I told them I'd be happy to kind of help them, uh, kind of make the decision on should we move for, should they move forward with it? You know, I'm, I'm technically on the board of directors that doesn't never meet as a board of directors. Right. Got it. Got it. So I was like, yeah, totally happy, whatever. So we get on that call and, uh, it, the, the girl running the call did an awesome job. Like she pre-qualified, she was like asking like, are all the decision makers on the call, which was awesome. She was doing some really cool stuff. Like how long, um, until you guys are going to make a decision to move forward and really cool sales techniques that honestly you don't see a lot of, I feel like people are kind of afraid to ask those questions. Right. And so, um, she did a great presentation, answered all the questions and it was kind of like sold. I felt like, and got to the end, she asked for the sales. She's like, you know, can we, uh, you guys ready to move forward today? I'm like, yeah, look at her. Like I want to hire her for sales. I don't even have anything to sell right now. And, uh, she, the, my brother and like uh, his office manager were kind of talking. We couldn't really hear him that well or whatever. And I'm thinking like, I think they're going to move forward, you know? And so I was like, Hey, listen, um, I can't remember the lady's name, but I'm like, I bet if you threw in that, uh, 299, uh, startup, uh, expense, I'll bet you, I'll bet you'd get them to move forward today. <laughs> <It> rhymes. I'm <laughs> negotiating. You're che- yeah. You're cheering for the, the salesperson. <laughs> yeah. I was cheering for the salesperson. And now I'm like, well, let me negotiate, uh, for, you know, my old company and stuff. And she's like, yeah, I mean, if I could do that, then, you know, you guys would move forward. And they're like, yeah. So she like messaged, I don't even, she probably didn't even ask, but she said she was going to ask her manager. And she, I think she waited like 30 seconds. Oh yeah, he just <laughs> got back to me. <laughs> yeah. um, but she goes, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do that. We, he said, we can do that. And so they, they, they're getting signed up. They're moving forward. So why do I tell you this? Why does this even matter? Well, a couple of points I want to make is one, just because people, uh, ask for a discount or ask for a deal or throw something in, it doesn't actually mean that you have to just instantly give them that for them to move forward. Like if, if she would have come back and said, no, we can't do it. They would have still moved forward. Yeah. It was just 300 bucks. So I I really want to make that point because I know, especially when you're getting started out in business, you're just like giddy to, to be in front of anyone. And if they're like, could you do it for half off? Like, "Eh, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. Try to make that work. Yeah, Yeah. 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 But it's it's true, and you just because they're asking for a discount doesn't mean you have to do it. Um, so I want to just kind of give you guys listening that encouragement, that advice. Like it's okay to just say no. And in fact, that's what I recommend doing. Like if someone's like, "Hey, we want to move forward, but could you do it for less?" It's like instantly your answer is just no. Like you just know because you've already led with your best foot forward. And then if they're like, "Well, well, well," and they want to think about it, then it's like, "Well, I mean, if I could," instead of just like agreeing to do it is saying like, if I could do that discount for you, then would you move forward today? Then you've kind of tied them down, right? Yeah, you qualify it. Yeah, we, it, it's funny. I feel like we go around life and, and we know, we hear f- buzzwords, right? Like sales fund or sales psychology and all these things. And it's just, it's just, we, we do this every single day. We like, we get, we put ourselves in these situations where, you know, any, any advertising campaign hits you up and, if you don't make a decision, then it usually puts some a timing aspect on it or some discount or something like that. And we, we go through this every single day, whether we go buy a car, we're going to buy a, a TV at Best Buy. We go through this process, right? And it might not feel like it, but you know, I go look at a TV, then I'm going to Google, where is that going to be the cheapest? Or is there coupons or whatever that looks like? And so people have this sales psychology and all too often, I think we feel like we have to we have to close the sale no matter what you have to close a sale and the truth is like if i want something it doesn't it doesn't matter what little gimmicks you can throw at me it's just make sure that you have a service or product 
you can offer that gets them excited. That's that's the more important part to sell them on what you can offer them, not necessarily on the 10% off or whatever. Yeah. Piece comes along with it. Yeah. And I do think that there are certain things where like, you know, you, if you can do that little extra incentive to push them over the edge, but I hear what you're saying. Like, and she did, she did a good job of, um, just really building value. Like yeah. they were excited. I was excited. I was like, dude, man, you can do that. You can do that. It's like, you start adding up the time savings that it's going to give you and the benefit. And it's like the cost benefit analysis is kind of a no brainer. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the first point, yeah, you don't have to throw in anything. The other thing that I want to make, and, and I don't think, I think what they did was fine. So the other point I want to make is number two, always have something to give away. Um, I like, I like letting the client feel like they're a winner. And what I mean by that, like in this instance, um, what's up, Taylor? Yeah. what do you think? what did you think? He was on the call. He was on the call. So, uh, what, what'd you think of that? Um, I think you don't, the, 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 what I'm trying to say is like, when you give something away, like it, that was just 300 bucks. And in the long, I mean, everyone's trying to, like, if I gave you $300 a day, that's still a good thing. Right. But in the long scheme of this purchase, it would, like I said, it wouldn't have mattered, but man, it felt good to just like, feel like, yeah, we got to win, you know? And so it could be anything, just hold something back to where it's like, you, you don't have to give it away. And I don't know if that's this company's strategy or not to just charge that. And then if someone wants to negotiate, just throw that in. But like in landscape lighting, one of the things that I would do to negotiate is rather if someone was like, you know, it's $10,000, if you do it for 8,000, then we'd move forward rather than just being like, okay, yes, sir, I'll do it. You know, I'd say, there's just no way I can do that. And then they, I would still try to close the deal. And if they were just like, I just don't know that I say, all right, well, I mean, what's it going to take for me to earn your business, right? And still not even give anything away. But then if they still couldn't close the deal, then I would start to be like, well, listen, we have this maintenance plan. It's normally, you know, $800. If we could throw that in for like half price, would you move forward with us today? And what's cool about that is you, you only gave up half, even though you technically could probably throw in the whole thing, the whole year, but you don't have to. So just kind of let them take a little bit at a time and let them win as much as they feel like they need to win. Yeah. And I think it's, it's a negotiation, right? So you should, you should want to get something in return too. You know, if you're going to, I love what you said, if you're going to offer half off of the maintenance program, like we, but we've got to get this scheduled today, like, or, and maybe it is, you know, I'll give you 48 hours, whatever it is. But this idea of like, if they're just asking for flat discounts, but not willing to commit or anything like that, I'm with you. I, to me, a negotiation goes both ways. Both of you should be feeling excited about the end of the conversation and bummed, right? Yeah. <laughs> they say like, if you're a little, a little happy, a little sad, it was a good negotiation. So yeah, I'm with you. Don't give away the farm just because someone asks. I felt like that's when I sold my business, that's how I felt. And maybe my brother was lying. Maybe he was like super stoked, but I felt <laughs> like we were like pissed. <laughs> that's good. It's like, damn if it. Both, as it's long like, as man, both sides like so are, pissed. as long as both sides are, that's, that's usually healthy. But yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, hey, give me half off. Okay you're going to home film like shit and the, that guy's going sweet. So yeah, make sure you get something in return. Well, honestly, even like you think that they're going to feel like amazing. I think it's almost like they're like, I don't, like I've had that where it's like, this is too like, so you yeah. were going to charge me full price, but now it's half. Like, so I was going to get ripped off. Like you can yeah. actually lose a sell by. That's a really good point. Not really negotiating. Point. Right. You know? Yeah. So that was kind of a cool experience. Um, if, uh, I think, uh, Taylor, I think you guys should reach out to that girl and just hire her, uh, for a sales position. I think she said she was in Colorado. So maybe go open up a Colorado location or something because she, she was pretty on point. The only thing is I probably wouldn't, I mean, she just gave away that $300 without, uh, any effort blamed it on, you know, said I can ask my manager if I were her, I would have been like, oh, I really can't, you know? And then we're like, okay, let's move forward. Or if she, if she, uh, if, we, if she said, I really can't. And then we're like, gosh, I don't know. And she's like, well, let me check with my manager, you know? Yeah. But she probably doesn't care because her commission probably has no <laughs> bearing on that 300 bucks. Yeah. Right. So she's like, heck yeah, if I can give any, some, anything away, I'm going to do it. So she's smart. She's yeah. smart. All right, cool. Uh, let me find some buttons here. And what we're going to do is take our little break. It's like some wannabe rap music or something. I, I'm going to start freestyling here in a second. Here we go. Go, go. <laughs> All right, and when we come back, we're going to have David Kaminsky telling you guys, stick around. This guy is solid. We're going to talk about how he grew his uh, window cleaning business and then how he dominates 
the uh, SEO strategies with websites and Google My Business. So stick around. We'll be right back. There's more to landscape lighting than just throwing a fixture under a tree. The best display is one that was not only designed well, but also stands the test of time. High-quality fixtures and bulbs are key to long-term success and customer happiness. At Emory Allen, our focus is on creating only the highest-performance landscape bulbs in the industry with long-lasting components that don't degrade or flicker with age. Each bulb's appearance is always consistent throughout your lighting project. We offer a wide range of base types, beam spreads, and color choices that will fit your needs. To learn more, give us a call at 843-480-4473 or email us at info at emeryallen.com. Attention all pros. When you leave a deal with your clients, don't leave money on the table. Join Tursup Nation today and partner with pros all across the country who can help you make more money for your services that are related to your project. Landscapers need plumbers and pool installers need hardscapers and every combination in between. Tursup Nation is free. Your information is secure and you'll be connected with other pros in the industry who want to do business with you and not to mention property owners who need help with everything. If you think your clients don't need you and the connections you have, think again. Join TursubNation.com today and start putting more money in your pocket for services you never knew you could. Just remember to sign up for this free service. Go to TursubNation.com. Hey everybody, it's Brooke Ford, host of The Green Veteran here on Turf Up Radio. Be sure to check me out every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern. You're going to hear some great one-on-one interviews with green industry professionals. We're going to talk about best business practices, highlight innovative products, and also provide some insight into some new emerging technologies in the field. That's The Green Veteran airing each Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern. And remember, Turf Up Radio, your industry, your station. Lighting for Profits, presented by Emory Allen. So let's figure out how to hit some more buttons and welcome Mr. David. What's up, man? Hey, guys. How are you guys today? Good to see you. I'm excited to be here. That's for sure. Yeah, man. Thanks for uh, dedicating so much of your time to the light landscape lighting industry. Well, I just like hanging out with other business owners who are cooler than me, so uh, it's a no-brainer, right? <laughs> you are in the wrong place. You are in the wrong place, my That's friend. That's like a couple buildings yeah. over. Oh, I'm in the wrong wrong show. All right. <laughs> the slide guys. Those guys are so cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, thanks so much for being here. Uh, you know, I mentioned that you, were, uh, you came inside Landscape Lighting Secrets program uh, not too long ago. Yeah. and shared a bunch of information so i want to get to that here in a few but first if you don't mind i kind of want to just have you introduce yourself um tell us you know how long you've been in uh the window cleaning the pressure washing industry and 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 we'll go from there yeah so um thanks again for having me here i, I listening to you guys talk i just had a lot of thoughts on what you guys were saying but we'll skip that for now um <laughs> yeah i've been in the window cleaning industry since well, i started doing it in college in 92 uh, started my own business in 99. Um, we've grown to the largest window cleaning company in Arizona, and we've also expanded into Denver um, earlier this year. Uh, I have worked myself out of the business. We've got general manager, office staff. Um, I, I don't even pay people anymore. Um, that was taken off of my plate a couple months ago. Um, so I don't do the payroll. I don't I do not do the deposits. Um, Pretty much the only thing I do for my company is is I love marketing and I love uh, messing with websites and uh, Google My Business listings um, and, you know, website rankings. So that's pretty much what I do now. Just basically have fun. <laughs> that's awesome, man. I mean, that 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 is what everybody should try to do. If you're going to if you're going to be an entrepreneur, if you're going to start your own business, I just don't understand. Like and I, I didn't I didn't think that was the goal when I first started. I thought it was just to try to make money and like try to be happy what you're doing. But man, there's so many stresses. There's so much uh, that you put on yourself as a business owner that 
you know, it's really not worth just being self-employed. I mean, you really want to build it to that point where you can replace yourself. So well done, man. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a lot of work, <laughs> been a lot of failures along the way. That's for sure. <laughs> well, uh, I, one of the things that I preach is vulnerability. So is there any failures that you want to share with us? Anything that's like a big thing that you're like, man, this would have been nice to avoid. Oh man, so many things, so many things. Um, pretty much, pretty much all we have is you know, the, the thing that really turned the corner for our company. Um, and you were talking about, um, I think you know, you were talking about um, you talking with a, a vendor and possibly signing up. You know, there's a few things. Number one is we started drug testing employees many years ago, and that turned the corner for us. So you get high quality people in your business, you know, and then. I pay, I overpay good people. So if you're good, I'm going to pay you more than anybody, my, any one of my competitors will. Um, but, um, that helped turn the business around for sure. Um, that was a big milestone. It just got done and sick and tired of, you know, people who were unreliable, um, not dependable. So drug testing was the biggest thing that, that turned the corner for us. And then, um, you know, when we have somebody coming to our website, um, you know, a lot of your opt-in forms are like name, and email address and comments. My opt-in forms like two and a half pages long. So when somebody comes and they put that much time and effort and energy into the opt-in form, they're committed, man. They're not, they're like, man, I spent five minutes filling out this form. I'm not gonna go try to call somebody else. I've already spent, you know, five minutes of my time or 10 minutes of my time, whatever it is. Um, you know, that's, that's interesting. To me, that's really, really interesting because I'm more traditional, like digital marketing, you're always like as short as they can, get them through that process. But just get you the say, email. Yeah, just yeah. get the email. But you saying that out loud makes a lot of sense. Like you're you're in a way qualifying a lead before they even come in. That's that's smart. That's cool. Yeah, they feel obligated because they already kind of spent enough time on your website. You know, you ask them a bunch of questions. And obviously, you ask them really, really in depth questions about their property. You know, we want to get you the you know best pricing or best service we can. Tell us all about this and tell us about that. Um, you know, it's just like when you were, you know, trying to make the sale or somebody's asking you for a discount, you know, the more time you spend with a client, they're, 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 they're getting attached to you a little bit. So, you know, they're not going to go somewhere else. So that's kind of what we do on our end. Yeah. I think that's, that's cold sales when you're just trying to get that email, but I think that's best practice. But on this, I think you're right. People are reaching out to you. Uh -huh. And so the more information that you provide to them they're I mean, they provide you, they feel like they're giving you something so you can offer them some better service. Sorry, I got excited about that. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I sold a tractor earlier. I sold a tractor earlier today and I went online for a uh, bill of sale and I was filling out this and I, I knew it right away. I'm like, this suckers are going to try to try to get me to sign up for a stupid account when I'm done with this. And I was <laughs> running out the door, I typed a couple more things. Oh, next question. Typed a few things. Next question. Sure enough, man, they asked me to sign up for I'm like, forget it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> but, uh, anyway well i like that because it's it really is like a complete 180 from what traditional marketing will teach you i like also that you mentioned paying i don't know that i like the drug thing because um can you hire anyone if you drug test are there is there anyone available it is scary you're right you're right about that it is definitely scary um it is a little bit scary but yeah you can find some really good guys for sure oh no i do like that but i more importantly i like the fact that you you pay more and what here's the thing it's it's good for so many reasons because a lot of business owners try to sol solve problems the wrong way and they're like well i can't afford to pay someone that so i'll just pay them less and then magically they recruit and attract untalented people unqualified people and then it's just the revolving door right and yeah. so i love that you did that because it puts pressure on you as a business owner to figure out how to pay for that and one of the things i'm always preaching is raise your price like you've got to be able to profit enough money to not only provide for yourself, but all these other people. So um, some people feel guilty for raising their price. It's like, dude, then just raise it and give everyone in your company a raise. You know, like um, it's, it's, you don't have to take it and go to Cabo. Like you can, you can put it back into the business, but um, especially now in this economy, like you've got to be willing to pay top dollar if you expect top talent, right? Yeah, another thing we've done in our business is, you know, we've we've kind of pulled the ceiling off of employees. You know, they think they're working for the man. Um, I don't want to be the man. I want to be the man that changed these guys' lives, gave them more opportunity. So, 
if someone works for us for two years or longer, we'll go open another city for them and allow them to run their own business, their own window cleaning business in that city. I mean, I say their own, we own it, but um, they're going to get a percentage of sales. Now they can hire and fire. Um, we have all the processes set up. Um, so that's how we expand into other cities. So now we got these guys that are working for us. that aren't like, first of all, they're not going to be my competitor. Second of all, they want to stay in the company because we overpay them and we offer all these benefits and stuff. Um, and then thirdly, we pulled the ceiling off and gave them as much opportunity as they want. That's huge. I mean, from, I'd say that's, that's one of the things that I've seen frustrate owners more than anything else is that their employees aren't committed to the businesses they are. And, it, and for, as an outsider, it almost makes you laugh because you're like, why would they be? This is this is a job. Why would they have as much vested interest as, as you do? But you yeah. allowing for that lets them feel like that they're they have a, they're vested. I, I, I really like that. I think that's smart. And I think you'll continue to be frustrated if you treat people like like they're just employees. They'll just always yeah. act as employees. And then other things we did is we've given guys responsibilities, you know, at the supervisor levels. And they get bonus based on their sales within their little division. So whether it be a commercial division, a high rise division, a residential division, an area like Flagstaff, um, an area like Denver. So we give guys bonuses based on sales. So if me or any of my staff have to kind of quote unquote do their job, they're not going to get their monthly bonus. So guess what? They do everything and I don't have to do anything. And then they get a bonus and they're super excited. So, um, they're motivated by sales. They're motivated by the guys working for them. They're motivated by the team, you know, working efficiently and, and doing more work. Um, so it's kind of nice how it works out. Yeah. That's a killer strategy to scale. Honestly. I mean, that's super smart. Um, hopefully, hopefully people are taking notes. Uh, what, what advice would you give to someone who's maybe still just in that, uh, just afraid to scale? You know what? I don't know if you remember when you started, it's hard. You hire your first guy and then like you find out they stole or they don't show up or you lose them. Like it's, and so then you kind of retreat and you're like, ah, it's just easier to do it myself, you know? But yeah. I guess what, what advice would you give them who, who are in that mo in that moment now where they're like, yeah, it's just probably easier to just do it myself. I don't want to deal with employees. So yeah, each and every one of these steps was jumping off a huge cliff for me. Um, and, you know, I've heard many times in business, if you're not uncomfortable, you're not growing, right? Um, when I hired, you know, the first manager, you know, quote, manager, I paid a guy's salary. I'm like, oh, man, am I going to be able to afford this guy's salary all year, even if, you know, we have slow seasons? And God provides, man. Somehow it always works out, you know. Um, other things, like if you buy a house this big, you're going to fill it with this much stuff. If you buy a house this big, you're still going to fill it with more stuff. Um, so in business, I always went after the really big jobs. I mean, we do airports, we do stadiums, we do all sorts of really large stuff. Um, and I always figured if I'm going to get that job, I'll figure out a way to do it. So um, I don't know. It's kind of always been my motto is I'll, I'll go after the big stuff. And if I get it, then I'll figure it out. Um, and it is scary. I mean, even hiring my general manager, like when I, I remember hiring a scheduler, like, man, I'm going to pay somebody to sit around and just answer phone calls when I could answer them all day. Um, it is, it's scary. And if you're not scared and if you're not feeling like you're jumping off the cliff, then uh, you're not growing. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love that you're putting pressure on yourself. And like you just shared that analogy of like, you know, you'll fill up the house. Um, I was actually on a sales call earlier today, someone who's, um, they're actually going to be joining my program, which is cool. Um, and they shared with me this quote, we were talking about like taking action and stuff. And that's why when, when you're a business owner, you have to put pressure on yourself. Otherwise you'll just keep doing the exact same thing over and over and over uh, because it's way easier. You don't have to like do hard things. You just put out the fires that you're used to putting out. But he said, um, and he didn't make this up, but if you give yourself 30 days to clean your house, it's going to take 30 days. So you could say, well, I'll do it. You know, I'll start working on my business next year or I'll, I'm going to scale next year or whatever. It's like, start scaling now, like literally go put the, the ad out for the manager, like go start to replace yourself now, because if you give yourself 30 days, it's going to take 30 days. You give yourself five years, it's going to take five years. Like we, we are all cre uh, are, are guilty of this. We're human. It's just natural for us. It's just like saying, I'll stop procrastinating tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's mine. <laughs> like, really? Just do it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We're going to do a quick break. And then when we come back, I really want to get into this uh, Collaborate Pros, uh, your main, well, it's not your main, 
your an, another main business that you have and uh, yeah. talk about some of these strategies that you've used to grow these businesses. So stick around, guys. We'll be right back and we'll talk. We're talking GMB and website SEO strategies in just a couple minutes. Isn't it nice when the weather cooperates and crews complete jobs on time and on budget? But weather can cause delays. And with paper route sheets, jobs get lost in the shuffle. That's why you need Aspire Crew Control Scheduling Software, an easy-to-use, flexible, and affordable solution that allows you to shift schedules with a single click. Try Aspire Crew Control for free at AspireCrewControl.com. Hey everybody, this is Hacubus from the Nightcap. I'm just sitting here relaxing within the vault with my friends and a tasty, tasty pint. You should stop by and listen in sometime. I'm here every Monday through Friday, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern, live only on Turf Up Radio. Your industry, your station. Hey, this is Jeff Hester, senior contributor and co-host of the Weekend Review here on Tursa Radio. Can't make it to major green industry events, but want to stay connected? Don't worry, we have you covered. Be sure to download the Tursa Radio app or visit our website. We'll bring you the live coverage you need to keep you up to date with everything that happens in our industry. And to find out where we'll be next, simply visit greenindustryevents.com. That's greenindustryevents.com. And always remember, Tursa Radio, your industry, your station. <laughs> we are back live in the landscape lighting secret studios in the basement of the dungeon uh sounds nicer than it is welcome back all right so uh david i want to get into thanks so much for kind of sharing your story and background and stuff like that already yeah. shared oh. some amazing insights um i want to get into SEO and and I know you don't like even calling it SEO because your strategy is like completely different from what like the traditional SEO guys do. Um, I guess let's talk about it. Your company is Collaborate Pros. Go to collaboratepros.com if you guys want to find out more. But um, why do you think SEO gets such a bad name? Well, SEO. The difference of what we do in SEO is uh, we actually give you a live dashboard, and you've seen one of these dashboards, right, Ryan? Yep. It's got individual keywords, search terms in your cities that you service. So on a daily basis, you can check and see how your website's performing, how your Google My Business is actually performing. So if you wanna show up, you know, number one in your city for you know, landscape lighting near me, um, we plug that into your dashboard, we let you track it, you know, we work on it and uh, you know, we make the magic behind the scenes and day by day you can see, you know, see how your website is actually um, you know, performing with each keyword that relates to your service industry and your service area. So um, that's a little bit different. It's something different that we do. You know, I've heard hundreds of times over is, man, I have an SEO guy and it's a big mystery and they don't give me reports and they give me reports, but I don't understand them. And SEO takes so much time and it's just, you know, it's a big mystery. Ultimately, uh, we take the mystery out of it. We give you a dashboard and we say, hey, here's what we're going to do. That's huge. And, and I have seen that dashboard. It's awesome because you can literally see like, Okay, in the last 30 days, this keyword went from number 78 to 24 or number two or whatever it is. And I've always I've always been like that. I'm like, I'm pretty sure our SEO guys just like are gamers and they don't sleep and like they're just that type. But um, I didn't really care because I was making money. Right. But still, I was like, it's kind of good to know. So um, it it's awesome what you have there. Um, let's talk about GMB. Um, I know when you did our, our training inside our program you shared some tips and stuff that people could do on their own. And just like I did in my program, I'm going to encourage everyone who's listening to this, or if you're watching, don't do it on your own. Like just hire David because it's all about the who, not the how Yeah, you can figure all this stuff out, but it's going to take a long time. And it's probably not going to be quite as good if you just hired someone to do it. But still there are some things that what, even if they do hire you that they're going to want to want to do. So can you share some of those things that will help 
make sure that their business is listed in the top. Well, first of all, that it's even listed in the three pack and then it's the top of the three pack in their cities. Yeah, definitely. Um, a lot of things you can do in the Google My Business, first and foremost is you wanna fill out all the information in there 100%. Google asks you, you know, how long you've been in business? You know, it's important, they wanna know. Um, there's a little blurb, you have um, 750 characters to describe your business. Um, I didn't go over this with your group, Ryan, but in that 750 words to describe your business, put as many keywords in there as you can. Like, hey, I'm a landscape lighter in Dallas, Texas. We provide landscape lighting design. I mean, put every keyword that you want in those 750 word description. Um, that right there is huge. Uh, it's not a mystery why your website will show up for certain search terms and, and certain ones it won't. It's because Google doesn't know the information. If it's not somewhere on your Google My Business or within your website, Google's not gonna know that's a service you provide. Um, secondly, you wanna put a lot of photos in your Google My Business. Now, if you wanna be in certain you know neighborhoods, that's where you wanna do your business and your work. Um, drive around there and use your mobile phone um, with the Google My Business app and take a ton of pictures because Google shows a lot of times they'll show your business on the map pack based on how many photos you have. And, and for Google, it's almost like a contest, how many photos you have compared to your competitors. So Google gives you a little analytics report within your GMB and says, hey, your photo was viewed you know, 16,000 times and your competitors on average were viewed you know, like 8,000 times. So you've got double the views. And then those images are geotagged. So if you spread them out all over your city or all over your service area, um, and if somebody's searching in a location, like say that high end neighborhood you want to be doing service in and someone's searching for a landscape lighting company near them, Google says, well, you know, Brian was just here and he took a picture right in this neighborhood. I know he works here. So Google's more inclined to show your website in the Google, uh, map pack, um, because you, you've showed that Google that you've actually worked there and that's where you took some of your photos. And could I just uh, clarify one thing? Because in the landscape lighting industry, we're all about imagery and nice photos and stuff like that. But I do want to make sure, and I want to get you know your uh, opinion on this. But it could literally be like a picture of your crew working. I mean, we're not. This doesn't have. This is not your portfolio. This yep. is just to get that geotag. I mean, that is the purpose to get a bunch of geotags near those nice in those nice neighborhoods that you want to work in. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, you do want to you know, provide some decent photos and pictures, some that'll grab some attention. If you go to our website, collaboratepros.com, there is a link in the menu, uh, how to geotag images. So I can sit here at my desk in Arizona and tag all my images in Texas if I want. So um, there are little secret hacks and ninja ways to do it behind the scenes too. I love that. I love that tool because you like you showed me on a, like I think it was in Denver, how you like, you had oh, geotagged yeah. all these and I'm like thinking, you're like walking around the city blocks, like picture, <laughs> picture, picture. It's like, nope, you know, those were just photos that you geotagged with those coordinates. So now when someone does look up, you know, commercial window cleaner near me, voila, there you are. Yeah. So that's uh, something I did show you. Yeah. Ryan is I literally placed an image on every high rise building in Denver. Um, and if you search high rise window cleaning in Denver, we are number one in the maps and in the listings. I didn't tell you this since I talked to you last, Ryan. I turned in a bid last week in Denver. It is a half a million dollar a year contract I turned in in Denver last week. I don't know if we'll get it yet, but if we get it, half a million dollars is a lot of work. That's crazy cool, man. Yeah, but guess what? They searched online and I, I wonder how they found us, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what else is, is, uh, what else is important in the Google My Business? So in Google My Business, you can um, do blog posts and you can um, do updates. Um, updating is like a, it's, um, or you can do um, promotions and coupons. So you can put coupons in there, you can put promotions in there, um, and then blog posts. Uh, Google, and when you put something on a Google property, the, the nice part about a blog post is you can put a link back to your website. Um, and it's it's more powerful than what you think. Google really wants those to get noticed so that they, they get it out in front of people searching. One thing that I learned from you was that, you know, I knew that Google offered those free websites, but I was like, I didn't really pay any attention to that. I also learned from you that, no, that actually matters because you can link that to your real website as well. Yeah, absolutely. So the way the Google websites work is it'd be um, landscape lighting secrets dot 
business. So that would be your, your website that Google creates for you and your Google My Business. And you're right, it's a Google property. Anything that's a Google property holds a lot of authority and value. Um, and most definitely click every single button in there, add services, add uh, products. There's areas in there to add as many products as you want, as many services as you want. Um, and then just go to town blog post and on all your products and all your services. Yeah, that's huge. I think I, I also want to kind of um, emphasize that those those promotions that you do, I mean, they only last like three weeks and then Google takes them down. Um, but how do we how do we get those? You had a you had a sweet ninja. Uh, hack. Yeah. OK, so the promotions last as long as you want them to. So the promotion, the promotions are like coupons. You can put an expiration on them. Usually I do them once a month. But the blog posts expire. So the way to not get them to expire, I think it's 14 days and they have links to your website. So they're valuable. So if I did a blog post yesterday and I did one today, I would link the one I did today to the one I did yesterday and the one yesterday to the day before. So you link them all together. It's a little daisy chain and they won't disappear. So it is it is a real ninja hack. It's pretty awesome. That is cool because I, I, I started doing that once upon a time and then I, I got busy or sick of it or whatever. I didn't have a good system in place. So, and, and I was like justifying it like, ah, they disappear after two weeks anyway. But the <laughs> fact that you can link them like that is killer. So yeah. Hope you guys are taking notes. That's good. <laughs> uh, what about, so Google my business, that's huge guys. I mean, when you, when you do a search, just go look for anything right now that, that usually shows up even before websites. So it's free. Like that, you know, I mean, you can sign up with David and stuff and he can help you with this stuff. But like literally Google is giving you free real estate and you need to be like, that's, I feel like the number one thing you should focus on when it comes to marketing advertising. Uh, but then second to that is obviously your website, which also influences your GMB ranking and stuff. So let's talk about that for a minute. What, what is Google looking at when they rank websites? So there, there's quite a few things. Content is usually king. So Ryan, if I'm your competitor and you have, you know, 100 to 200 pages about landscape, you know, lighting and design and services, uh, products and everything else. And I have, you know, home page, a residential page, a commercial page and about me page. I've got five to 10 pages. So you have several hundred pages of content and I only have five. Um, content is king. The more content you can get on your website, the better. So um, also in Google My Business, if somebody's searching for, you know, commercial landscape lighting company and your website doesn't mention anything about commercial landscape lighting, Google's not going to give you the love to show up in the Google My Business. Um, you'll see sometimes when you do a search and it'll say right underneath the um, your Google My Business listing, their website mentions commercial um, landscape lighting. So you have to tell Google what you're doing. Yeah, another right. secret, another real secret that um, I don't share very much, but um, landscape lighting near me, like the near me search term. How do people show up for that search term? It's, it's a big mystery, right? Nobody knows. Well, go put a blog post on your website and say, I'm a landscape lighting company near me and use the exact same terms. <laughs> and Google's like, Hey, his website says near me. Guess what? You start showing up near me. I showed you how I showed up. I actually show up in Houston, Texas, number one for a certain search term near me. And I'm in Arizona and I showed that to Ryan and Ryan was like, Holy hell, how'd you do that? Um, well, cause I know what Google wants and I just gave it to them. So, yeah, what I love is it's, it's just real stuff that works. There's no like black hat. There's no, there's no like link farming or anything like that. It's, it's just giving Google, like you said, give Google what they want. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what about if, um, again, I'm going to, I'm going to talk everybody into not doing this themselves, but let's just assume <laughs> that there's some people out there that are cheap, which I'm sure no, none of our listeners are like that. But <laughs> yeah. um, what about if they want to do some of this themselves? Um, one of the things that you do is you kind of create a web of, of different companies. What can they do to start um, helping the, their own website get ranked? So what you want to do is you want to associate with people in your same industry, right? So if you're going to write a blog post or if you're going to um, do something on your website, links are are power. So the more links you have coming in or going out is power. You don't even really need a lot of links coming into your website. Um, I work with a company in Los Angeles and they literally have 30 or so links coming into their website and they're number one. Um, so it's not the amount of links coming in. 
It's more so who you're linking out to. So you want to link to an authority in your industry. Um, you know, the lighting contractors, you know, other landscape lighting companies. Um, so do a blog post or, um, or even a website page on your, your page. And when you link to an authority, link to somebody else in the landscape lighting industry. Um, that'll show Google what industry you're in. And the more you relate with other people in your same industry, uh, Google gives you a lot more authority and love. So, yeah, if, if uh, I'm friends with five other landscape lighting business owners around the U.S., obviously you wouldn't want to link to your competitors and stuff, but in different <laughs> yep. areas, then it's like, hey, I'm going to do, do a blog to you. You're going to do a blog to him and just kind of, you know, every time we do this, I'm going to link to others and yeah. in exchange for you guys doing the same thing for me, right? Yeah, it works great. I mean, I've seen, I mean, I've you've seen some of the dashboards that I have, Ryan, and they just blow up. They just explode when you start uh, linking to other people in your same industry. It's awesome. And if you don't, and if you don't have any friends, <laughs> um, like me, for or, Ryan, for Ryan, this is for Ryan. Go ahead. What do I do? If you don't have any friends, for yeah, Ryan. listen up, Ryan. Yeah. If you don't have any friends, <laughs> uh, well, actually, Steve's in your studio. I think you guys are friends, We're but um, you can link to a, just a random company, just some random, you know, or Wikipedia pages. Um, so you can still link to other, you know, landscape lighting companies, and that's fine. It's just you're associating yourself with the industry. Uh, and that's what Google loves to see. Last thing I guess I'll bring up is um, like directories. So um, I know like, you know, like I'm kind of anti paying for to be on house and stuff and, and places like that. But uh, talk to us about just creating the power of creating those accounts and stuff like that. Yeah. So um, Google does put a lot of a lot of weight on which directories you're associated with. And that does in fact, help your Google My Business quite a bit. Um, so if you're uh, if you're in any business, I always recommend the Better Business Bureau. Um, they have a free listing, so you can do a free listing. You don't have to pay the you know five hundred dollars a year or whatever. Uh, Chamber of Commerces are huge. Um, you want to be in the Chamber of Commerce in whatever cities you provide service in. Um, those are great directories. So when Google sees that you know you're a serious business and you're listed in these directories. Um, they do give you your website more authority and more weight. Um, you know, yellowpages.com, stuff like that. Um, even Yelp, you want a Yelp listing. Uh, Angie's List and, and um, Home Advisor, you know, those are good to have listings for. I don't agree with paying for ads because, you know, I just don't pay for advertisement in my company. But um, if you have those, they, they do help. They most definitely help. Okay. So, um, man, thanks for sharing all that information. I really appreciate it. Um, I guess if you want to just end with your sales pitch, like now you told everyone what they can do, but let's talk them into not doing it themselves. <laughs> well, I mean, if you do go to collaboratepros.com, um, you'll see my picture on the homepage. If you scroll down, you can, you can book like a 30 minute session with me um, and I'll go over just kind of strategies and how we do stuff. Um, it's kind of nice to see your website individually and how you're doing and where you can work. Um, we, we find holes in lots of search terms that people don't know exist and we target them. Um, yeah, and like Ryan said, we do all this stuff for you. We handle your Google My Business listing. We optimize it for you. Um, we get lots of images for you. Uh, we do blog posting. Um, there's also, a, a if you go to collaboratepros.com, there's a section that's called how to blog, and I show how to do a blog post and, and get your website to show up, you know, in one of the top spots on the first page, just simply by doing a blog. Um, but we provide the blog services for you. Um, we provide the website optimization for you. Uh, we do all that stuff because you need to go run your business. Um, we, I've literally put eight to 10 years of hard work behind all of this. I know how to do it all. And then I built a company with all the systems and processes behind us. So, you know, we can simply do it for you. And, and the price is actually really cheap. We do have a uh, discount code. It's called Turfs Up. You're on Turfs Up Radio right now. But if you do want to sign up, uh, book an appointment with me. And then you can get 10% off by using that discount code too. Awesome, man. That's like a surprise for me. Yeah. Merry Happy Christmas, Christmas, right? Yeah. Happy New Year, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. That's actually awesome. And honestly, like even the regular regular rate is super affordable. So uh, mm -hmm. I've spent up to five times the amount that you're charging and still got a return. So yeah. uh, it's kind of a no-brainer. <laughs> uh, so yeah, guys, go to collaboratepros.com and sign up and then what is just turfs up to U R F S U P. Yep. Turfs up. We'll get you 10% off. And, and yeah, the price is fairly, inex really inexpensive. We wanted 
the price point to be low. Uh, first of all, if anybody's just starting a business, it's affordable. Um, literally, you're going to make your return on one sale. There's just no question about it. Um, yeah. And we just wanted it to be kind of open for everybody. That's why we made the price so low. And I know you've got a few options, but just go sign up for his top one. The, the other ones are garbage anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for it. I'm sure it's the, sure. the top one's called Dominate, one. right? Didn't you say you want to dominate your industry, That's your local right. market? It's domination. So there you go. The stars of a line. Yeah. You have now talked him into that. That is yep. Yep. dominate it's in stone. All right, man. Well, I really appreciate you coming on here. Thanks for uh, offering the discount. And uh, anything you want to close with? Final advice or anything like that? Yeah, my wife's getting out of the hospital. I got to go pick her up. Oh, dude. Yeah. yeah go do that. <laughs> thanks for making me a priority. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, man. Well, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you. Thanks for your time, guys. Um, have a wonderful holiday season. It was nice hanging out with you guys today. Maybe we'll do it again someday. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Keep me posted on what happens with your wife, too. I will. She's good. <laughs> see you guys hey buddy all right guys we'll be right back with our lighting tip of the week as we close this session out that was awesome that was good really really good Are you a military family with a spouse on deployment away from home? Did you know that nonprofit Project Evergreen has thousands of volunteers across the country ready to help military families with lawn, landscape, and snow removal services? We call it Green Care and Snow Care for troops. If you are a military family and would like to receive this free service, or if you'd like to volunteer to help, visit projectevergreen.org. Project Evergreen, creating a greener, healthier, cooler earth, one yard at a time. Ah, yeah. Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. The Weekend Review. The Weekend Review. The Weekend Review. Join King Darren and all of your favorite Turfs Up radio hosts, including uh, Hecius, uh, Eric, the Turf Teacher Jones, uh, Brian. My name is not Brian. Uh-oh. I mean, Ryan Lee, Wayne the Prophet Bowles. One opportunity. His son, we Daniel. The Ford, the Green Veteran, up. and many more. Join us live as we unpack the week and share what you may have missed live on Turfshop Radio. That's the Weekend Review, Saturdays, 9 to 10 a.m. Eastern, right here on Turfshop Radio, your industry, your station. Yeah. Oh, yeah! Are you tired of working dawn to dusk seven days a week and still struggling? Working hard isn't your issue. What you need to focus on is the business side of your business. That's where Profits Unlimited comes in. With our 42 years of experience in the industry, we have faced the challenges you are going through. We can help you with bidding, contracts, marketing, selling, and much more. Check us out at ProfitsRUs.com. That's Profits, A-R-E-U-S.com when you are ready to earn what you deserve. And don't forget, tune into Profit Time at 10 to 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Remember, profit is not a dirty word. Oh, that song takes me back to the 70s when I was stoned all day long. Were you born in the 70s? 1980. Yeah. But if I was born, well, actually, if I was born in the 50s, then the 70s would have been a hit. Let's just say that. A little je- jealous of my parents' generation. He was good. Like, that was like, we were just talking about that. Like, you give, like, actual tips, things you can do today to help your business. Yeah. That was really awesome. I, I mean, it really was cool because, obviously, I do want people to sign up. He wants people to sign up, whatever, but... You don't have to just go do these things yeah waste your time all right um no he was really good and literally like he told me right before that his wife was in the hospital yeah i was I, like do you need to go and he's like no i'm good i'm like yeah you are good <laughs> <laughs> so it's, hey the commitment that people are making i appreciate just to be here just just to let our listeners know if your wife's in the hospital always choose your wife Hey, he seems to be pretty happy. Uh, no. He was awesome. He was good. Yeah. It's probably just a minor surgery or something. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Husband, tip of the week. Husband, yeah. If it's not life or death, 
I'm not coming to the hospital. Well, Lindsay will tell you, I am not in any position to give husband tips of the week. <laughs> this is a lighting show, a business show. This is not a how to be a good husband show. I would not be a good host. <laughs> so um, here's the thing. It, it kind of, well, this doesn't go with the topic that we just talked about, but it kind of does because like most things in life, we tend to, or not most things, but in, like most uh, things in business, like when we buy something, we view it as an expense. We're like, oh, SEO, I don't, I don't have enough money for that because it's an expense. Well, it's not true. Like you can't afford, it, you might think you can't afford it. I think it's like four or 500 bucks a month. But in reality, you can't afford not to have it, right? Same with hiring employees, buying tools, purchasing a vehicle or renting a shop, spending money on personal development, hiring a coach, whatever it is, right? So, but in reality, when done correctly, all these expenses are just investments. They're investments, you know? And so that leads me to my tip of the week. Okay. Which, by the way, I call it lighting tip of the week. I've probably only shared one tip of the week that had to do with lighting. It's always about business. Hire a CPA. Hire a CPA. Yes, it will cost you money. Like, like everything costs money. But like other investments, it will bring you back way more in return. And uh, there is such good things as good CPAs and bad CPAs and stuff like that. Uh, but literally, like, make the investment in a CPA because a, a good CPA can guide you. They can make sure your business is structured properly, help you avoid uh, self-employment tax, um, really help you uh, invest even better, right? And they can uh, make sure that you are uh, writing off the right amount in your business and, and, and putting those expenses in the right spot. I, I know my CPA, I can't remember how much I'd pay him. To me, it wasn't a lot at the time, maybe like 1,500 a month or something, or not 1,500 a month. It was like 1,500 a year for like the return but it included some sessions and stuff like that. And I was like, dude, I'm paying this 15, this guy $1,500. He saved us literally tens of thousands of dollars. Like that good of an investment, almost better than investing in landscape lighting secrets. <laughs> almost. <laughs> Isn't it funny we do that though? Like we, we think we can do it ourselves. Yeah. You own a business and it would be like, you know, you come to my house. I'm like, nah, nah I can go to Costco, get some solar lights. I get the gist of it. And that like upsets you. You're like, no, what I what I can offer you is so much more than that. But yet then we'll hesitate and on hiring a CPA when it's like that's literally their job. They can help structure your business, save you money. And we're hesitant. We're like, I can just do this. I got TurboTax. I got this. Yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, it's seriously, we we look at it and like, how can I save money? I mean, we had David on there talking about how he pays his employees more. We were like, how could I? Instead of pay someone 25 an hour, how can I do 20 an hour, 15 or whatever? And it's like, that's like the complete wrong way to look at it. So flip your mindset, turn it upside down, get a CPA. Um, it, it will seriously change your business. That 1500 will come back very, very quickly. Um, and then before we leave, uh, Matt, Matt Johnson was is on here. I think he's still on here, but he said his wife too is in the hospital. Literally in recovery so man we what a great show you guys thank you for abandoning your wives and being here for lighting for profits that actually makes me feel good and terrible at the same time but thank you yeah, yeah. i don't know where to take that one um matt we appreciate your loyal your loyalty to to this relationship yes just don't tell your wife what you were doing all right guys that pretty much uh is a wrap so uh Encourage you guys to go check out collaboratepros.com. I want to thank um, David Kaminsky for being here. Thank you, sir. Thank you for banning your wife. Uh, thank you, listeners. Thank you guys for being here. I really do appreciate you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, thank you Ryan. So much, man. And uh, thank you to uh, Emery Allen for your uh, partnership. So, did they send you this water bottle? Yeah. Yeah. That's a gift. That's a gift. Yeah. That's just one of the few perks of still cold. It's a Yeti. It's impressive. All right, guys, you guys have an awesome week. Keep them, move, keeping them moving to forward. Uh, <laughs> keep moving forward and uh, keep working on replacing yourself. Honestly, it's going to take some time, but in the next three to five years, you could be out of your business potentially even faster if you keep putting in the time. So keep moving Love forward, it. guys.
think. And we're 